Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Denali-36. When last we listened in, the group was part of a subdued victory celebration at the palace. King Pellet was behaving quite strangely, and the party took notice of it. After the party was excused, the monarch took Grish to task on repeated failures of having the party handle issues themselves. A meeting was set up the following morning, and Grish exited the Sedown Inn without eating. We begin a few minutes later in the barren streets of Sedown City. Your Holiness, came a meek voice from the darkness. Grish, instinctively reaching for a weapon, bellowed out for the voice to identify itself. I am Patton, my lord. As a supplicant man approached, he continued, I have a message to deliver and offered a wax-sealed document. Puzzled, Grish fumbled for a coin and tossed it to Patton. The slender man gasped as he noticed it was a gold coin from the giant's hoard. The man thanked the Zenobian profusely and awaited an answer. As Grish scanned the letter, he appeared to be confused. Patton cleared his throat, bringing the cleric out of his puzzlement. Uh, yes. Tell him yes, I will meet with him. Patton bowed deeply and re-entered the shadows, moving off swiftly. Smacking the parchment against his hand, the large cleric walked towards his quarters wordlessly. The next morning arrived with Phidias and Grish sitting opposite of each other at the corner table. The gnome shoveled food into his mouth at a furious rate and noticed that the cleric's plate was untouched. He reached over and stabbed a thick piece of ham with his dagger and tossed it into his mouth. Grish watched the rogue wordlessly. Slamming down the eating utensils, Phidias jumped to his feet. What is your problem? he demanded. Snapping out of a trance, Grish mumbled, Huh? which caused the diminutive gnome to yell louder. You come in here twice, you eat nothing, and this morning you look like you didn't sleep at all. You are wearing the same damn clothes and you sit there like a zombie. What is your problem? Before the cleric could answer, the rest of the group joined them and Sir Omel piped up. Maybe it's the way you shovel food into your mouth, Phidias. It isn't very dignified. The knight shook his head as Phidias displayed a mouthful of half-eaten food. You look like crap, Grish, quipped Yolanda Two Blades. Didn't sleep well, she inquired. Grish exhaled deeply and pointed out that he had a great deal of things on his mind. With the rest of the group eating, he began to pick at his plate. At one point, he blocked Phidias, grab for a crispy piece of bacon off his plate. I'll cut you, little one, he warned. A broad smile crossed the rogue's face and laughed heartily as he spit food out on the table. That's the Grish I know, he said happily. After consuming their morning meal, they arrived at the palace and were greeted by the guards who escorted them to the throne room. A well-rested and smiling monarch greeted them warmly. Welcome, welcome, my friends. Please, please sit. Would you like any wine? The monarch snapped his fingers and the wine steward filled glasses and delivered them to the party who took places on a comfortable couch. Grish stood behind the furniture where they were all seated. First, an apology. Grish pointed out that I overlooked your generous and powerful contribution to the cause in yesterday's speech. This was an oversight on my part, and I hope you will forgive me. The group was stunned that the Royal Highness would offer such an apology and squirmed nervously, followed by an awkward bow. A large smile crossed the monarch's face as he turned away and looked out the window. Secondly, and most importantly, your reward. With the recovery of the golem's heart, and the destruction of the invasion force, and defeating the dragon, I think the Denali people owe you a much larger debt. I have sent word to Brodo, a holding to the east, 
to release some of our gold. Knowing adventurers often prefer gold and gemstones, I want you to get your money and then some in a portable fashion. I hope you will understand that there may be a slight delay until the wealth arrives and hope you will continue to enjoy the fruits of our fair city. The group, completely puzzled by the king's actions, looked to each other to say something. As the silence grew, the king's smile trickled from his face. Finally, Harris the mage spoke up. Your Highness, we are pleased that you approve of our efforts and are happy to continue to help the people of the Denali Kingdom. We are certain that any reward you decide upon will be more than we deserve. All of us, as he gestured to the group, will await your notice for your call. There is no need to apologize about yesterday's speech. We were but a small part of a concerted effort. Certainly your forces could have handled the invasion easily. We were just happy to assist. The smile returned to the monarch's face and he nodded his head in acknowledgement. Be that as it may, we are indebted to you and will reward your efforts richly. Phineas snapped to attention with a broad smile and uttered, Now we're talking! Until a firm hand from Yolanda to his leg silenced him. Grish, please show our heroes out as I must contemplate a large rebuilding project. Thank you again, heroes of Denali. The people recognize your resounding efforts. Grish held the door open and escorted his associates out. Guards lined both sides of the hallway and the group hastened their exit with Phidias complaining of the rush. Once outside, the six circled around each other and reviewed what had just occurred. I don't know what you're bitching about, asked Phidias. He said he was going to increase the reward. You guys are always so negative. Omel and Yolanda turned to Grish. Well, quipped the knight. Grish shook his head before speaking. I, I don't know, but yes, something is going on. Will you be returning to the inn? The group nodded and Brother Stance of the Verte Order asked Grish if he would be joining them. The large Zenobian nodded, but added that he had a meeting to attend with an old acquaintance, but would rejoin them later in the day. Need any help? asked Yolanda. The response from the cleric was one word. Simon. Yolanda nodded and said nothing further. As Grish wandered down the street, Omel, Harris, and Stance looked to Yolanda for an answer. She saw their looks and responded, Sage, Simon. I'm starving. Hurry up, guys, replied Phidias as his stomach let out a loud growling noise. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.